story. Introduction The Phoenicians were an ancient civilization that emerged around 1200 BCE, the Phoenicians stand out as one of the most influential and enigmatic civilizations of their time. Originating from the coastal region of the eastern Mediterranean, the Phoenicians played a pivotal role in shaping the course of history through their maritime prowess, innovative writing system, and significant contributions to trade and culture. Known for their seafaring skills, the Phoenicians established a network of colonies and trade routes across the Mediterranean, becoming renowned merchants and navigators. They were the first to develop a phonetic alphabet, which greatly influenced the development of writing systems in the ancient world. The Phoenicians also played a significant role in the spread of civilization, as their cultural and commercial exchanges with other societies facilitated the exchange of ideas and technologies. Despite being conquered by various empires, the Phoenician culture and influence endured, leaving a lasting legacy in the fields of trade, language, and navigation. This article explores the fascinating world of the Phoenicians, shedding light on their remarkable achievements and enduring legacy. Phoenicia, from ancient Greek, Phiomicron Iodinu Kapaeta, Phoink, meaning purple country, was a thalassocratic ancient Semitic civilization that arose in the eastern Mediterranean and west of the Fertile Crescent before 2500 BC, and scholars generally agree that it included the coastal regions of northern Palestine. Today, Lebanon and southern Syria reach as far north as Arwad, but there is some disagreement about how far south it extends, and the farthest area is suggested to be Ashkelon. Colonies later reached the western Mediterranean, most notably Carthage and Numidia, and even the Atlantic Ocean, and civilization spread across the Mediterranean between 1500 BC and 300 BC. Phoenicia is an ancient Greek term used to refer to the main product exported from the region, cloth dyed with purple images of Meric mollusks. The term refers to the major Canaanite coastal cities, and is not entirely consistent with the cultural identity that was recognized by the Phoenicians themselves. Their civilization consisted of city-states, similar to ancient Greece, perhaps the most notable of which were Tyre, Sidon, Arwad, Brytus, Byblos, and Carthage. Each city-state was a politically independent unit, and there is no archaeological evidence to prove that the Phoenicians considered themselves a single nationality. In terms of archaeology, language, lifestyle, and religion, there is no significant difference that separates the Phoenicians from other inhabitants of the Levant. Around 1050 BC, the Phoenician alphabet was used to write Phoenician, as it is the oldest alphabet in history and was discovered in Ugarit. It became one of the most widely used writing systems, and was spread by Phoenician merchants throughout the Mediterranean world, where it developed and was absorbed by many other cultures. Rooting The name Phoenicians, like the Latin pony, Poenicus, later Panicos, comes from the Greek Phiomicron Nu Iota Kappa Epsilon, Phoenikis. The word Phiomicron Nu Iota Xi Phoenix means variously, Phoenician person, purple of tear, crimson, or date palm, dot. With all three meanings it is already attested in Homer. The mythical bird Phoenix also bears the same name, but this meaning is not attested until centuries later. The word could be derived from Phiomicron iota nu faunus, red blood, itself possibly related to Phiomicron faunus, murder. It is difficult to ascertain which meaning came first, but it is understood that the universe may have associated the crimson or purple color of dates and dye with the merchants who traded all these products. It has been suggested by Robert S. Pekis has a pre-Greek origin for nickname. The oldest form of the word in Greek may be the Mycenaean buniqijo, buniki, perhaps borrowed from the Egyptian fenu, fenku, Asiatics, simites, although this derivation is disputed. The popular etymological association of Phiomicron iota nu capoeta with Phiomicron nu iota xi mirrors that in Akkadian, which links Kenai, Kenai, Canaan, to Kano, dyed red wool. The land was originally known as Kn, compare Iplite Kananayam, Art Kanana, and its people as Nai. In the Amarna tablets of the 14th century BC, people from the region called themselves Canaanites or Canaanites. Later, 
In the 6th century BC, Hecateus of Miletus writes that Phoenicia was formerly called Kainu-Alphakina, a name later adopted by Philo of Byblos in his mythology as his name for the Phoenicians, China which was then called Phoenix. The ethnonym survived in North Africa until the 4th century AD, Canaanites. The Canaanites are divided according to linguistic classification into several branches, the most famous of which is the Phoenicians, they lived on the coast of the eastern Mediterranean Sea, the Syrian and Lebanese shores. The Amorites, they lived in internal Syria and extended to the mountains of Lebanon and the mountains of Palestine. Moabites, they lived east of the Dead Sea. The Hebrews, they lived in southern and central Palestine. Ammonites, they lived east of the Jordan River, 1000 BCE. Rise of Phoenician city-states By 1000 BCE, the Phoenicians had established several city-states along the coast, including Tyre, Sidon, and Byblos. These city-states became important centers of trade and commerce, with the Phoenicians excelling in maritime activities such as shipbuilding and navigation. 900 BCE Phoenician Colonization The Phoenicians began to establish colonies throughout the Mediterranean and beyond. They founded cities such as Carthage in North Africa, Gator, modern-day Cadiz, in Spain, and Utica in Tunisia. These colonies served as trading outposts and helped spread Phoenician influence across the region. 814 BCE Phoenicians and the Assyrian Empire the Phoenicians came under the control of the powerful Assyrian Empire in 814 BCE. They were forced to pay tribute to the Assyrians and provide military support for their campaigns. Despite this, the Phoenicians were able to maintain some autonomy and continue to thrive economically. 539 BCE Phoenicians and the Persian Empire Persian Rule the Persian king Cyrus conquered Phoenicia in 539 BC. With the fall of the Assyrian Empire, the Phoenicians came under the rule of the Persian Empire. Then the Persians divided Phoenicia into four main kingdoms, Sidon, Tyre, Arwad, and Byblos. It flourished, furnishing the fleets of the Persian kings. The Persians allowed the Phoenicians to retain their autonomy and continued to benefit from their valuable trade networks. However, the Phoenicians had to pay tribute to the Persians and provide military support when needed. 332 BCE Phoenicians and Alexander the Great Alexander the Great took control of most of the Phoenician cities without significant resistance, the Phoenician city-states came under the control of Alexander the Great in 332 BCE. As the king of Aratus surrendered to him, and the king of Sidon was overthrown with complete ease, while Tyre resisted the occupation until he entered it in the year 332 BC after a long siege that lasted the equivalent of six months from January to July, July. Alexander was exceptionally cruel to Tyre, executing 6,000 people immediately after entering it and then following up with 2,000 prominent citizens who were crucified on the city's beaches, seizing over 30,000 people as slaves to be sold later. Despite this, he preserved the lives of the king, his family, and some Carthaginian pilgrims who took shelter in the Temple of Melkrates. The rise of the Macedonians gradually overthrew the remnants of former Phoenician dominance over the trade routes of the eastern Mediterranean and Phoenician culture completely disappeared in the motherland. At that time, Carthage continued to flourish in North Africa. It supervised the mining of iron and precious metals coming from the Iberian Peninsula, and used its large navy and mercenary armies to protect commercial interests. It remained that way until it was finally destroyed by Rome in 146 BC, at the end of the Punic Wars. Alexander recognized the importance of Phoenician naval power and allied with the city-states during his campaigns. The Phoenicians continued to flourish under Macedonian rule and maintained their status as important centers of trade. After the death of Alexander the Great, Macedonian rulers over the Phoenician homeland succeeded in the following sequence, Laomedon, 323 BC, Ptolemy I, 320, Antigonus II, 315, Demetrius, 301, and Seleucus, 296. Between 286 and 197 BC, Phoenicia, except Arados, 
fell to the Ptolemies of Egypt, who installed the high priests of Ishtar as rulers in Sidon, Eshmunazari, Tebanit, Ashmanazar II. In 197 BC, Phoenicia, along with Syria, returned to the Seleucids. The region became more Hellenized, Greek, although Tyre became independent in 126 BC followed by Sidon in 111 BC. Then Syria, including Phoenicia, was captured by King Tigranes of Armenia from 82 to 69 BC, when he was defeated by Lucullus in 65 BC, Pompey the Great finally incorporated the territory as part of the Roman province of Syria. Venice became a separate province around 200 AD, 146 BCE. Roman Conquest of Phoenicia The Romans conquered Phoenicia in 146 BCE and incorporated it into their growing empire. The region became part of the Roman province of Syria and continued to be an important hub of commerce. The Phoenician cities gradually declined in importance as Roman influence grew. Th 7th century CE Arab Conquest and Decline The Phoenician cities fell under Arab control during the Arab conquests of the 7th century CE. The Arab conquerors brought Islam to the region and the Phoenician identity began to fade. The once prosperous Phoenician cities gradually declined and were eventually abandoned. Phoenician cities The Phoenician cities are located on the eastern shore of the Mediterranean Sea, the most important of which are Byblos, in ancient times, was the mountains and Byblos, in the Greek and Roman eras. It was one of the most important Phoenician cities, the oldest inhabited city in the world, and the source of the Phoenician alphabet. Tyre, which is considered one of the oldest Phoenician cities, its foundation dates back to the 3rd millennium BC, and since the late 2nd millennium BC, it has become one of the most well-known and famous Phoenician cities. Beirut, Berite, Demur, Sidon, which was the largest Phoenician city. Ugarit, Ras Shamra is currently located north of the city of Latakia and is considered one of the most important Phoenician cities due to its geographical location. The oldest alphabet was discovered in Ugarit, in addition to the oldest musical score. Arwad, it is the only inhabited island on the eastern shore of the Mediterranean in Syria. Tripoli, Tripoli. It was known by this name of Greek origin because it consisted of three small cities or three neighborhoods for the Tyrians, Arvadians, and Sidonians. Tartus is one of the important Phoenician cities and has its Phoenician port, known since ancient times. Sidon or Sidon is also considered one of the important cities. Jabla is the port of the Siano kingdom. On the western side is the city of Carthage, which is one of the Phoenician capitals in North Africa, Tunisia. There are several other cities they built in Lebanon, Syria, and Palestine, and each city has two ports to the north and south in order to facilitate communications between the cities. The Phoenician cities established commercial and cultural relations with Egypt and Mesopotamia, and these relations were based on friendship. Between a follower and a follower, these cities provided the countries residing with them with cedar wood, which was used in construction and shipbuilding. Skikta Skikta is one of the most important Phoenician cities and was known to the Phoenicians as Razakata, a maritime empire. The Phoenicians were a Semitic-speaking people who inhabited the coastal areas of what is now modern-day Lebanon, Syria, and parts of Israel. Their society thrived between 1500 BCE and 300 BCE, with several prominent city-states, including Tyre, Sidon, and Byblos, forming the core of their civilization. However, it was their maritime expertise that truly set them apart from their contemporaries. The Phoenicians were among the first seafaring cultures of the ancient world. Their sturdy ships, often called galleys, enabled them to navigate the Mediterranean with remarkable precision. They established a network of colonies and trading posts throughout the Mediterranean basin, including locations as distant as North Africa, Sicily, and even southern Spain. Their maritime skills allowed them to dominate the sea trade routes, facilitating the exchange of goods, culture, and ideas across the ancient world. The Birth of the Alphabet One of the most significant contributions of the Phoenicians to human civilization was the development of the first true alphabet. Prior to their innovation, writing systems were complex and pictographic, 
requiring extensive training and effort to master. The Phoenician alphabet was revolutionary in its simplicity and ease of use. Consisting of just 22 characters representing consonant sounds, the Phoenician alphabet laid the foundation for many modern writing systems, including Greek, Latin, Arabic, and Hebrew. This innovation democratized literacy, making it accessible to a wider population and fostering the spread of knowledge and culture, trade and commerce. The Phoenicians' economic influence was widespread and impactful. They were renowned traders, dealing in precious metals, textiles, exotic spices, and other goods that were in high demand across the ancient world. Their well-established trade routes and colonies facilitated the exchange of these commodities, contributing to the economic prosperity of the Mediterranean region. Moreover, their invention of standardized coinage, such as the shekel, revolutionized trade by providing a universally accepted medium of exchange. This innovation laid the groundwork for the monetary systems that underpin modern economies, cultural exchange and influences. As a result of their extensive trade networks, the Phoenicians were exposed to a multitude of cultures and ideas. This exposure enriched their own culture and allowed them to act as intermediaries, transmitting knowledge and technology between different civilizations. The most famous example of cultural exchange was the Phoenician alphabet's influence on the Greek writing system. Greek traders and scholars adapted and modified the Phoenician alphabet to suit their language, which eventually became the basis for the Latin alphabet used in many modern languages. The legacy of the Phoenician alphabet can be seen today in the alphabets of countless languages worldwide. Political Organization the Phoenicians did not tend to establish a strong state like the Babylonians, Assyrians, and Egyptians. Rather, they were divided into several city-states, and competition was prevalent between them. The reasons for not finding political unity among them are due to the following, trade competition among them and the difficulty of transportation, mountains, forests, valleys, rough paths. Although the Phoenician cities did not achieve political unity, Alliances were sometimes made between each other under the leadership of one of the major cities out of fear of external dangers that threatened them. Government system The Phoenician system of government was democratic. Each city had its own government headed by a ruler or king who ruled by hereditary rule. His authority was restricted. He was assisted in administering the government by two councils, a representative council, a body of legislators, and a supervisory council, the rich, in addition to the priests who had a major role in managing the helm of government. The cities of Tyre, Byblos, and Arwad formed an economic union with its center at Tripoli, in which general conferences were held to discuss economic affairs and common problems and work to control internal stability in order to secure the interests of each of them. They rarely discussed political matters. Religion the Phoenician religion was based on the worship of the forces of nature, such as the sun, moon, earth, sky, sea, rain, lightning, thunder, and storms. The Phoenicians made war, agriculture, navigation, and hunting a god and called Baal. In addition, they deified their kings and heroes, and believed in the divine trinity, father, mother, and son. El Anath Baal, Astarte and Adonis. At an advanced stage, the god El was in everything until the Phoenicians became considered the first people to believe in the monotheistic god El, their most famous gods. El, the lord of the gods, Baal, who is the lord of fertility and growth, the lord, as every city had its own Baal, and its Baal was an example of Baalbek, Baalbek, Baal Shemaya, Baal Shemaya, Baal of Beirut, Adonis, the god of the sun and life, his main center of worship in Byblos and his mistress, Ishtar, the goddess of love, fertility, and beauty. Their worship is widespread in all Phoenician cities. Eshman is the god of health, Sidon, and Melkart, Tyre, the king of the city. Reshef, the god of lightning, thunder, and light, Dagon, the god of crops and vegetation, and Mut, the god of death. Structures the Phoenicians built temples to glorify their gods, the most famous of which was the Temple of Adonis and Ishtar in the Afka Cave, the source of the Abraham River in Byblos. The temple consisted of three sections. 
The inner part is the place of God and His worship. The outer section is the crossing to the interior. The public square, and the residences of the priests and employees were next to it. Offering Sacrifices The Phoenicians used to offer human sacrifices to the gods in difficult times, and they were sometimes replaced with animals, whose blood was poured on monuments and whose meat was burned on altars, in their belief that its smoke satiated and satisfied the gods. Prayers, invocations, dances, and hymns were performed by the priests. Celebration Seasons The Phoenicians had two main seasons. The season of joy, joy, and happiness that was held in the spring season as a symbol of the rebirth of the god Adonis. The season of sadness and depression that takes place in the fall is a symbol of the death of God. This goes back to the story of Adonis, who was struck down by a wild wild animal in the forests of the Abraham River Valley, which had become sacred to the Phoenicians. She began begging the god Mot, the king of the underworld, to revive him again, and that was what she wanted, after death. The Phoenicians did not believe in a second life. Rather, they believed that the soul does not perish after death, but rather resides in a state of stillness and calm, close to the body, that is, to its owner. The Phoenicians buried their kings and nobles in stone sarcophagi, while they buried the common people in wooden coffins. These sarcophagi and coffins were placed in safe places out of reach of thieves, where the dead person was placed with the necessary supplies, ceramic vessels, and jewelry. The name of the dead person was engraved on his grave, and the family and relatives of the deceased would visit him from time to time, and place flowers, food, and drink on his grave, thinking that his spirit would be pleased with that. Forests. It was a reason for raising the ambitions of the neighbors of Phoenicia. It covered the entire mountain until it appeared as an endless source. The Phoenicians went to extremes in cutting it. Egypt was the first to trade with Byblos for its timber, even if the possibilities of exporting timber from Byblos diminished, its star declined. When Phoenicia came under the authority of the Assyrians, Chaldeans, and Persians, they boasted of building their palaces of cedar wood in Lebanon. The tax on wood was often imposed on Phoenicia. Industry. Purple pigment. Its industry was monopolized by Tyre and Sidon. It is a metaphor for natural seashells, originating from murex shells. Breed on the shores of Phoenicia. They collected huge quantities of it until it has become rare today. After the seashell is removed from the beach, a yellow liquid oozes from it, discoloring the tissues. Even when the dyed fabric dries, it turns purple. It became more luminous whenever it was exposed to light. The Phoenicians were fascinated by making it dark or bright. It is clear from this that the dye was not purple, but violet, but rather the propaganda portrayed it as crimson red. Purple factories may be witnessed near the cities of Sidon and Tyre. The murex shells remaining to this day south of Sidon bear witness to this. Since the smell emanating from it was unpleasant, the Phoenicians were interested in establishing factories outside the city. They developed its industry until they eliminated Aegean speculation, after it had been dominant in the late 2nd millennium BC. Metal Artifacts Among the primary mineral materials we mention tin, copper, iron and gold. They initially brought tin from Asia, from Elam, and from Asia Minor. When they excelled in navigation, they brought it from Etruria, in Italy today, and from Spain, and they ended up in southern England, the country of Cornwall. They imported copper from the Amanos Mountains, and iron they extracted locally. Small quantities of these metals were enough for them due to their limited use, to meet their needs of weapons, utensils, statues, cups, and money, the coins of which bore the drawing of a Phoenician boat. As for gold, they used it exclusively for jewelry and similar luxuries. Glass and Ivory The Phoenicians did not invent the method of making glass, but rather took it from the Egyptians. But they made it transparent, and diversified its types. So they made cups, bottles, and bottles of perfume from it. Both Tyre and Sidon were fascinated by his coloring. So they took out white, yellow, red and blue from it. 
they made its manufacture an art to the point where they became so proud that they signed their names on their glass products, such as Jason and Arthas. Earrings, bracelets, rings, and necklaces became studded with glass stones, very similar to precious stones. Phoenician glass cups were often prizes for winners in athletic and physical competitions among the Greeks. The Iliad is rich in evidence of this. As for ivory, a material foreign to Phoenicia, it was brought from India via Mesopotamia, or from Africa via Egypt. The Phoenicians made small boxes and statues from it and decorated them. Huge numbers of ivory artifacts were found in sarcophagi and tombs, because they were deposited with the dead. Ceramics Industry The Phoenicians excelled in making ceramics. They made huge quantities of vessels and small statues from it. Since their interest was in the commercial aspect above all else, they did not focus on producing artistic masterpieces, but rather on producing cheap vessels and desirable statues in the markets. Its industry developed until sarcophagi were made from it. Most ceramic vessels are found in cemeteries, as they contain perfumes or certain supplies that are buried with the dead. Some of the vessels found in Kafrajera, near Sidon, indicate that they succeeded in making the ceramics thin, consistent, and even resonant, and at that perfection. Shipbuilding The main factor for the prosperity of the shipbuilding industry is the availability of the raw material, which is wood. The Phoenicians' dependence on the sea for their transportation and trade forced them to develop this industry, so they turned to large boats. These are divided into two categories, commercial vessels and military vessels. The commercial boat is long, with one or two rows of gunners sitting on each side, depending on the size of the ship. Its front is high and ends with the head of an animal. In the middle of it is a mast carrying a sail. As for the military boat, its nose is sharp and prepared for collision. The boats carry at their stern two long beams that act as rudders. The reputation of the Phoenician fleet spread. Until Phoenicia became a maritime power coveted by all the neighboring empires in Egypt, Mesopotamia, and Persia. Regarding the ships of Carthage, Rome later transferred the models of its ships. Decline and Legacy The Phoenician civilization began to decline in the 4th century BCE, as various powers, including the Persians and Alexander the Great, exerted their influence over the region. Despite their eventual political subjugation, the legacy of the Phoenicians endured. The cities of Tyre, Sidon, and Byblos remained significant centers of trade and culture, and their people continued to make notable contributions to the development of the Mediterranean world. Additionally, the spread of the Phoenician alphabet left an indelible mark on the course of human history, forming the basis for countless writing systems that continue to be used today. Conclusion the Phoenicians, often overshadowed by more famous ancient civilizations, were pioneers in their own right. Their mastery of the seas, the invention of the alphabet, and their contributions to trade and culture laid the groundwork for the development of the Western world. Their legacy endures in the words we write, the languages we speak, and the maritime traditions that connect us to the past. The Phoenicians, with their indomitable spirit of exploration and innovation, continue to inspire and fascinate us to this day.